that just, that just never gets old. I love this poncho. It's so much fun in the snow. <laughs> What I wanted to do today in this uh, snow was demonstrate a tarp configuration with an emergency tarp, a reflective tarp, or a sportsman's blanket. Those small tarps that you carry in a go bag or something like that, just a five by seven. And we're gonna set it up in a half box configuration. So it's taken me a long time to figure out what a half box configuration would be good for. Because if you look at it, you think, what in the world would you use that for? And after I got to thinking about it, It'd be great for warming uh, yourself up or someone else up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a half box shelter, put a fire in front of it, and see if we can get it warmed up. Uh, it's not an overnight shelter. It's just for a, basically a survival shelter to get warm. I've got a Hiker's Brew coffee I'm going to put on the fire and uh, put it in my canteen cup and see how that tastes and how that works out. Try that out. And have some fun in the woods today while it's snowing. So thanks for coming along. So let's take a look what we got. I found two trees. We'll run from here to here. There's some good dead wood for us for our fire. I'm gonna run from this tree to this tree, just a little uh, bank line or paracord real quick. And then I'm going to get my uh, tarp out and set it up and show you what this is gonna look like. And I'm going to use my trekking pole. Now you can cut a stick for this. You don't have to have a trekking pole. I just find the trekking pole very handy. It saves my knees and my ankles like I've said before. And also it's very, very handy for setting up shelters or tarps or uh, tent poles or whatever you need this thing for. So many uses. Here's our kneeling pad, sit pad. That's going to provide some insulation. And here is our, our tarp. I'm going to put this about waist high. And I'm just going to tie a simple knot in it. And on the other side, I've got a new knot I want to show you. Recently, I started working with the, uh, my local search and rescue team, which I wish I had done sooner. This is really it's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. It's right up my alley. So I'm gonna grab this tight, and then I'm gonna. This is this is a knot I learned from Harold on my search and rescue uh, team. And what you do, it's called I think it's called a running eight on a bite. You're gonna take take your line and in the direction, the opposite direction of the way you want the uh, figure eight to go. You're gonna bend it that way. So I'm bending it the opposite direction. And I'm going to bring it back through, making a figure eight. And there you go. Now what you'll do... Now what you'll do is you'll be able to run this back through itself and pull it tight. And then you just take it this is some scrap paracord I've got here bear with me if you ever want to join paracord up use a double fisherman's knot and you can make it longer I use scraps a lot of times I don't throw them away anyway so there we go and I'm gonna bring it around and then you wrap it around and tie it off. And I'm going to put a toggle in there just to keep it secure. It's that easy. Stake it down. I'm gonna stake it down on the V. So put, put this back one in. Put your 
sides. And again, I'm using the shepherd hooks because they hold the tarps down a lot better, in my experience. Now we've got our corners staked in. We're gonna secure up the ends and then put the trekking pole on the back side. So let me bring you in closer. So now we're gonna tie a Prusik knot. Now I'm gonna go to my bag of toggles again and pull out one of these little pre pre-tied paracord loops. I'm gonna make a Prusik knot with it. That easy. And I'm gonna run it through here. Now instead of tying a knot, let me see that. What I'm gonna do is put it through here. And run another toggle, run a toggle through it. Hope you can see that good enough. There you go, we don't have to worry about tying knots. And that's Prusik knot, I'll keep it tight, we can adjust it as we go. And that's what we're gonna do. Do it to the other side. Same thing to the other side. Now you're gonna fold the top over. The rest is just cosmetic. It's I'm more worried about the function than I am the the looks of it. Now that we've got a layout, I'm gonna adjust these nuts here and bring it in a little bit more. And the benefit to this is that I'm gonna put my fire here. Now I've got this reflected blanket all the way around me and on top to reflect all that heat back down to me. So half box shelter, just a quick uh, survival shelter just to be able to get yourself warm with the fire. So let's get a fire going. Use the old firebox stove. Really putting this thing through its paces and it's done well. Couldn't be happier with it. My buddy Skills to Survive sent me some waxed cotton and we're going to use that for the tinder to get started. Well, as you can see, it doesn't take much to get this thing heated up. I'm gonna dry, some, uh, dry my gloves off and get warmed up. Uh, I can already tell, a big difference. Very nice. And of course, if you're not demonstrating this in a video, it goes up a lot quicker. You know, this is a quick, I need to get warm shelter. 
you could do a lean to, you could do uh, a plow point wedge, you could do all those things. You know, I'm just showing you different ways to do this. But I like this because it's got the sides, it's got the top, and it's all reflective. So all that heat is coming back to me. I need to gather some more wood. Because it is cold old. But I can already tell a big difference. So very happy with this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for coming along for another tarp shelter. We'll see you next time.